Oh, yeah, we're on. Well, welcome to 5 o'clock anywhere. We're, oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. I got to get used to it. My name is Neil Alderati. I can't tell you what an honor it is to introduce you to the following people to my left. Hank, you want me to use uh, last names, first names? What would you like me to do? Hank McGraw, fine. Hank McGraw, Frank Henderson, cousin Frank, yeah. cousin Frank, Jennifer, Jennifer Brewster. Brewster. You just met this young man, Ian yes. White, over here. And again, my name is Neil Alderati. Hank, why don't you start out? Just tell me a little bit about. <coughs> love your hat. <laughs> Great, <laughs> love that. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My brother wouldn't like it that much, but uh, yeah, nah, you know. uh, I I don't know what to say other than Tug would love being here. This was his type of gig. He, right there. He was the one that loved the, uh, the light, the camera, and uh, speaking to people about whatever, even if he had to make it up. And... Uh, I'm happy to be here with cousin Frank and Jennifer. Nice to see you. Likewise. And hopefully somebody will learn something out of this. Yeah. Why are you pointing at me? Your well, you're next. <laughs> you're next. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, a, a little tribute to Tug and uh, I think ultimately the foundation that, uh, that he uh, started. And uh, um, I always remember my cousin Tug we were Napa, we grew up in the country. Hank and Tug grew up in Vallejo in the city with their country cousin. They used to come up and we'd throw uh, rocks and apples and dirt bombs and everything you could at each other. But uh, when Tug got to be uh, a major league baseball player, he, uh, he didn't forget where he came from. And uh, whenever he came to town, he called everybody in the family up and said, hey, how many tickets you want? Can you make it to the game? I'll see you down there. And uh, it was it was cool. And I don't, I think a lot of guys that make it to that level sometimes forget that. And I'm kind of speaking out of turn because I don't know all those guys, but uh, definitely Tug Tug uh, did a great job of that. And he never forgot where he came from. As far as the foundation goes, even though Tug had great skills. And that was obvious. He spent 20 years in the major leagues getting people out. Um, he always felt that the reason he got there was because he got an opportunity. That somebody did something for him to get him a look-see. And then he turned that into a successful career. Um, the foundation is an extension of that because Tug thought there are plenty of people out there that just need a little break. They just need a little opportunity. And if his name could do something about that after he passed, then he wanted us to continue the foundation so that his name would work for others that just needed a little break, just needed an opportunity. And uh, that's why we're here. Well, I think to add something to Hank's comment about, uh, you know, everybody gets a little break. I think as the story goes, the break that Tug got was from Brother Hank, because Hank had signed with the Mets and he said, hey, I'll go, I'll go that direction, but you guys got to take a look at my little brother. And so, um, hey, it worked. <laughs> that, that was the break and uh, he never forgot it and no. he wanted to offer that to other folks and uh, give cool. other folks a chance and give them a little opportunity, a little break. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? And yeah, well, I'll go with the break theme and the Napa Valley <laughs> theme. And there's no shy in conversation with this group. Um, well, um, Tug's break, we'll follow in with that. Warren Brewster, um, Jack's dad, my husband, um, got his break. Um, oh, the camera. Um, because <laughs> she Tug pointed a dancing bear back there. <laughs> <laughs> there. He's a dancing bear. Because uh, Tug. Um, Tug got injured in the major leagues and Warren Brewster got brought up for his break. And so I got to meet Tug later on when he got married out here in the Napa Valley. And there's long, long um, roots here in the Napa Valley. Tug's family here um, got me, he got married out here. But um, I was a flight attendant with American Airlines for many gazillion years and um, got the phone call when everybody was down in spring training that um, Tug was in the hospital. So I'm talking to the towels 
and everybody thought that was quite normal, but um, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor and given three weeks to live. And um, everybody flew in, family, everyone. And um, his oldest son, um, Tim, said it was unacceptable to have three weeks um, to live. And so we started pursuing our journey with um, looking for better quality of care for Tug with brain tumors. And so my own son um, has autism. And I kind of had the knowledge of everybody and kind of knew how to corral all these groups of funny people with my um, flight attendant skills, which became very handy of, of managing Tug. Um, I pursued the journey of helping the family and all their children, including Mark, Carrie, and Matthew, and Tim, to find the best resources for Tug through his journey. And we started in Florida and made our way all, all up on a tour bus up to Philadelphia, and then we found Duke. As, as an extension of that, um, learning to improve quality of life around cognitive issues for brain tumor patients, um, military kept coming into our world um, wanting cognitive issues around post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. And it being a natural with our audience, as Hank said, you know, just, just using that name to give those individuals that extra help kind of that underdog and knowing if Tug and Tim and Mark and Carrie and Matthew could all go through this in the family, that it would help somebody else out. And so we really felt that knowing the numbers coming back from military with post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury, that we had an obligation. So in 2009, we included um, that into our mission. And so we all stand here. We're based at the Veterans Home in Yachtville, which the community has been incredible to us and we support a lot of local veteran um, programs here, including the Pathway Home. And um, could you give us a little more information about that? <laughs> Pathway. Yes. Yeah. So ironically, we met Pathway about two years ago, and um, it was a big introduction to us. Didn't you say was the foundation yeah. of what post-traumatic stress was and traumatic brain injury? And I'll never forget um, the reason why we chose the Veterans Home, though, I think is, is important is Tug, and I think everybody played up at that baseball field at some point, and it was a natural for us, and, and we owe the administration a lot of kudos for allowing us to come in and feel that it was part of our family. Um, but in doing so, um, I'll never forget there was this young man standing behind me um, in one of the buildings we were at, and there was chewing tobacco in the sink. I you're here. I don't need to put my no, no. And I said, it happens to me all the time. Shit. I mean, as a flight attendant, I hated pulling those cups behind the back, you know, the, the, the back seats. And I, there's a rule in the house, it's only in bottles and it can't be seen. But I couldn't believe it was in my workplace. And um, this gentleman from behind me says, it's not their fault. And I look back and here is this tall man and he was a corpsman. He said, and I said, you're too young to be here at this veteran's home. And he says, no, I belong to part of the pathway program. And so I needed to pursue who they were and what they were. And I just assumed that they were taken care of by the veterans home and learned to find out that they were a nonprofit that stood on their own there. And um, it's a remarkable program. Um, we were all taken by it, including Uncle Hank and Frank. And we just knew that we needed to adopt them. and. And even Ava, who would not be on camera, is over there. Her and her husband, she's our assistant, but her and her husband, Chuck, um, started Vets for Barrels. And so it was a natural thing for us to want to really take part of Pathway in the work that they're doing and the community that the Napa Valley um, people have done in, in really bringing that social connection to those gentlemen there and bringing them out was a real natural fit for us. Incredible program. Real quick story about the names. We have a good oh. question. Sorry, we have a good question about the Pathway Home. Um, someone wants to know how do people get accepted into this program? Like how do how do vets um, enter this program? So that's a good question, and they can um, email the Pathway Home directly. And Kathy Lowry is the. She'll be really happy. I just said her name on camera, but Kathy can take those emails or just go right to www.thepathwayhome.org. Or email us and we'll push it on through to Kathy and her crew. You were going to say something, Hank? A quick Tug story. Um, it always bothered Tug growing up that he was known as Hank's little brother. And, and it bothered him all the way into pro ball because I had preceded him into the Mets organization. So when he signed with the Mets, he remained Tug, uh, Tug Hank's little brother. And... Um, 
Apparently, it still pisses him off. <laughs> <laughs> and he's coming back at us now. But uh, a funny thing happened. Um, after 25 years of Tug putting up with being Hank's little brother, he got to New York finally and started making big league hitters look funny at the plate. And it all flipped around just like that. And I became Tug's brother. And so for the first half of his life, he was Hank's little brother. The second half of his life, I was Tug's brother. <laughs> Flash forward to uh, where he's in his 50s and we're walking in a mall in Philadelphia during the holidays. And I noticed a couple of little boys over here pointing at us. And they started heading over. I nudged Tug. I said, heads up. And Tug loved being recognized. He loved having an audience. He loved signing autographs. And here come these two 12-year-old boys. And the one runs up to him and he says, gosh, he says, you're Tug McGraw. Tug had his Sharpie out, had it cocked, ready to go. He's ready to sign an autograph. And the kid said, can you get us Tim McGraw's autograph? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the name thing has been solved. Quit calling me, Tug. <laughs> Frank, I noticed you have a sweatshirt on. Tell us about uh, Team McGraw. Is well, that Team McGraw is is one of the many uh, uh, activities that we have. We uh, we participate across the country in about five different marathon races. New York Marathon being one of them, under our uh, Team McGraw logo and shirts, and and we get sponsorship and and try. It's fundraising activity. And we do Nashville, Chicago, yeah. New York, Philadelphia. And Yachtville. Uh, and yacht, and it's yacht. a 5K. It's not so yeah. serious. Are you doing the, a Napa marathon uh, this weekend? We're not doing no. the Napa. But in October, we do. You mean, is he running it? Well, I was asking the answer. I mean, me, he's got the outfit. I saw his gym bag that he brought. He's ready to go. Our brain this dark. is an ad. <laughs> oh, an ad. <laughs> but tell me you're on 26.2. 26.2 is my uh, is my golfing handicap. <laughs> no, we hosted no, it, our first 5K in Yachtville yeah. in October this year, and um, we're going to do it again. You get to yeah. run in costume with a high heel dash. Yeah, we had a high heel dash, and I, you know every guy in this room needs to participate in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hank handed out the high heels. Yes, he did. did. I was surprised to see the. Big guys wearing high heels, but they all use duct tape to keep the shoes <laughs> yeah. on. I didn't think that was fair. So. They have, were they able to keep the heels? They, they had, no, Faith donated a pair of her beautiful yeah. shoes. They were yeah. gorgeous. And um, yeah, they so they were all vying to get them for their girlfriend or wife. And Hank and Frank and Tom and others were at the end waiting, and it was a lot of fun. But in addition to, you know, just a little more about the Team McGraw and the races, you can go online and uh, and okay. access the whole thing, get some more information about it. We provide some coaching. We provide some support in various ways at the, at the event, obviously, and a lot of volunteers help out. So it's really neat to participate in it, and, uh, and it's a great thing for us because, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to raise a few so bucks. Um, I see that you have some family members. This is like a McGraw family reunion, <laughs> or is it a Henderson McGraw? Do they not Henderson realize Mark. that we can? Yeah. Yeah, oh well, yeah. Well, 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 do they know that we're involved them in the conversation? Oh well, yeah. Well, are you there, Brian? Hi guys. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I'm, I'm Brian Henderson. This is my dad, Neil. We just thought we'd tune in and uh, help support the cause. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I need a glass. Here's yeah. looking up the old there address. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. So is it just that there are so many of y'all that you had to end up with two two yep. professional baseball players and a professional musician? Uh, so or you know we uh, two thousand of you and three of your professionals or yeah. just, I mean how'd that work out? I kind of went after uh, uh, the Henderson side of the family. My mother's a McGraw. Our mother is a McGraw, and that's that's the, uh, the connection there. And so we're all first cousins, but. Neil and Brian, Neil's my brother, and I've always uh, went to my parents and said, uh, what's the deal? Uh, 
They got two Major League Baseball players, a uh, country western star, and, and uh, Uncle Hank is a very good name. And we've got Neil and Frank. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal here? What happened? You need yeah. to stage that too well for you two over there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, but, but let me point out something about the guy with the white hair there. He Neil. qualified. Neil, my brother Neil, qualified mm -hmm. the last two years for the world championship triathlon Ironman races in Hawaii. That's, that's as big as it gets. You that's have to win to get there. And how old were you when you went, Neil? He's 123. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I, I, can you hear me OK? Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK, yeah. I, would, I think I was uh, 76 or 77 then. Yeah. This year, I, I got to be the new kid on the block. I'm uh, this this whole year because they don't do it by your birthday; they do it a whole year at a time. I'm in the age 80 group, so when I go to the race now, there's hardly anybody there. There's just me. <laughs> Wear your yeah, glasses; a, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a quick tug story too. Uh, when I uh, came back from flight training in the Navy and I had my newly, uh, and I took my commission in the Marine Corps, I came back with my newly minted wings and everybody's living at the place that uh, I spent uh, oh, a year or two with uh, my grandma. They're all living at 312 Carolina Street in Vallejo. And um, Hank and Tug and Denny, they were all there upstairs. And I came in, I had on my sharp looking Marine Corps uniform and my newly minted gold wings and I was I was feeling pretty hot, so uh, then it was, we it was all, some we time all later. Hit under the bed. We thought you were a cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, some time later, then that, that Tug went in the Marine Corps and he served a, a, a tour in the Marine Corps, but he said all that physical training was the wrong stuff for pitching. Too many push ups, too many. Push that wasn't the right training. <laughs> they, they almost got him. Uh, you probably don't know that story, but uh, no, I don't. My dad, my dad called me and said, "Son, you got to go get your little brother." And I said, "What's up?" And Tug had called Dad and said he could. He had qualified to be in flight school. Oh God! Oh, uh, out of basic training, <laughs> and he was considering giving up baseball and going to flight school. Oh. And he he be like you and being a jet, but. It was actually helicopters, and he would have lasted about 12 seconds over there. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I think I'm the only hippie in the history of the world that snuck onto Camp Lejeune, spent two days in the barracks there talking him out of it and dragging his ass down to spring <laughs> training. <laughs> There's a little yeah, good on, so good I, on you, Hank. I saved his ass from the Marines. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Hank. Well, New York thanks you, and so does Yeah, Canada. yeah, <laughs> for sure. We have another question. I'm going to ding my bell. Oh. Sorry, this is our annoying little, we have a Twitter question Get off bell. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Tia Buzz. Sure. I'm also one of the hosts here at 5 o'clock. But one of the yeah. questions that's come up as well is, can you explain a little bit more about brain injuries in general and, and all of the different facets of the brain that you're looking at through mm -hmm. this foundation? Yep, absolutely. So it's a very good question. So as we mentioned earlier is that we really base the models, there I am again, sorry, um, on brain cancer and really improving quality of life around cognitive. So where we really hone in on is how we look at post-traumatic stress. We really try to think to empower the patient, their caregivers, their families, and really picking programs that can empower the individual, such as the F-STOP. We've got F-STOP down in Southern California that teaches um, art therapy through digital photography. So with brain injury and post-traumatic stress, we get the individual using the camera actually communicating with their family. Because along with post-traumatic stress, and I'm talking military, is that there's some issues with communication. So anything that we can bring to them that will, if you will, open that up is one area that we're very interested in. Um, so we look into research, we look into empowering the individual and their family, and then we also create awareness. A second part of their program is that we do is we have the local brain food garden. We think it's important that the local 
understand what's going on at the veterans home we all remember the veterans home it just sits out there but we never know what lives in there and what does that so we really wanted to create an interactive brain food garden that creates um, awareness to the community and also brings the children and individuals in to to work with the veterans and also to provide kind of a, a healthy way of, of working and therapeutic value again bringing it back to tbi brain cancer and post-traumatic stress individuals and their families and Frank has done a wonderful job with Ava over there and Wendy, our CFO, who's not with us tonight, um, in really creating that local program. Um, the third part is we've got a couple of things we really we think change needs to happen within the system, um, particularly in the VA, and we champion them, but we want to help them. So we've got studies going down on in Southern California currently with the VA, and how do we excite psychiatrists? In, into really, oh, that's your profession. <laughs> sorry. But so within the VA, if the golden standard sure. is to is to um, do certain types of therapies, how do we get them encouraged to do that? So we're looking at studies like that. We've got one mind for research um, that's here with the Staglin family um, that we have co-done a grant with that is, is looking at what programs are really, really working effectively for TBI and PTSD, and that's being led out of Brown and Tuft. Did I get that right, Tom? Yay. <laughs> and then thirdly, we, we want to really encourage the next generation of young researchers, junior researchers. So how do you do that? You've got to get these individuals with physicians, with psychiatry. So we have a CATE program at Duke University that allows student at female athletes to shadow doctors for eight weeks out of the summer. So we believe that with those three prongs, research, research awareness actually four, research awareness, um, empowerment, and then inspiring the next generation is how we can really advance treatment and improve quality of life for those that um, with TBI, PTSD, and brain cancer around cognitive issues. I think, I think that those are really important. With my other hat that I used to wear, you know, uh, unfortunately, there's that stigma yeah. with psychiatry, mental illness, anything, head injury. Well, it was an accident, it was drugs, it was something else like this. And we, you're right, we have to learn how to empower people, empower professions, insurance companies, to people to realize that, you know, let's get it at the front end. Not, let's not try to wait until... We're overwhelmed and the system is overwhelmed. Right. Nobody pays for right. psychological services. It's the it's like you're you, it's not unfortunately like you have another illness or you go to a surgeon or something like that. It's completely different. So it's a step by step process. Exactly. You know, it's one that pays off and you know, the bottom line is quality of life. Yeah. How can we improve each person's quality of life in whatever their particular issue is that they're dealing with? and their families. Yeah. And I think that's where this family did really well with Tug's care is that from his children to his brother to, to everyone involved in Tug's care, we all empowered ourselves and kind of learned how to read the tea leaves and we turned a three-week diagnosis into a year's success with Tug with really great quality of life and so that's what we hone in on. That included. We got a Jeff that just uh, came in here. How are you doing out there? Oh. Yeah, we see you. Uh, we can't, can't, you. can't hear you. He's yeah. yelling. He's oh. yelling and laughing, but you can't hear me. Now we can't. No, 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 you can't hear things. Say whatever you want. <laughs> okay. No, I was just checking in on all my people that are hanging out in your studio there, making sure there's not too many glasses on the table. <laughs> Jeff is our, one of our board members. Yeah. He's our uh, CEO. Yeah. So he. Um, is the head of Team McGraw, along with jean Vier Goldstein out in Pennsylvania, and Kevin um, Masters that does a really great job for us at running programs. Also in Pennsylvania, we have Tug's son, Mark, yep. uh, who does yep. a lot of work with the program, and yep. up in Oregon, uh, his daughter, Carrie. And uh, his youngest boy, Matthew, is going to be a junior in high school this year, I believe. I we're really old if Matthew's that old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a tax baby. I know he's born on April 15th. <laughs> but at one time or another, they're all involved well, in yeah. helping out sure. and uh, oh, uh, trying to do the program best they can. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? Hey. Yeah, it, as all of you can tell, I'm also president of the Uncle Hank McGraw fan club as well. 
<laughs> yeah. I probably, I probably am looking more like him than anybody he's related to right now. <laughs> you got to do. I was, uh, I was wondering, I know that uh, there in California we had the, uh, our first Run For Your Life 5K and high heel run, and I was wondering, uh, Jennifer, if we were still going to do that again this year. Because I'll spring for the high heels if Uncle Hank will run in them. Oh. <laughs> He's actually wearing some right now. So. Yeah. I will if you bring plenty of duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, it's going to be Saturday, October 26th. And we've got a great partnership with the Yontville, town of Yontville and the community there where we combine a great Halloween festivity where you get to run in costume. So... Jeff, you get those high heels, and I know where you can get some five-inch stilettos. And Juice Me will be Jeff, happy to film it. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff has plenty of high heels. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Comes with the long hair, I guess. <laughs> we, we have one more question. <laughs> okay. Um, we, we've got a bunch of foodies here in the Valley. So they want to know more about brain food. What, what's brain food? Oh, God. Give, us, give us a few examples. Oh, mm. oh, that's a really great question. Things that get you from all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to right. that question. I, I think that sums it up pretty well right there. <laughs> we no. <definitely> had a <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's a good question. Um, things that really invigorate you, and we all know the great things that, you know, don't make you sluggish, and it's kale, and it's blueberries, and we had um, a great group out of Yontville that came out and helped us design our garden. If you guys are locals, come out and see it. It's pomegranate. It's just all the wonderful things that really, I know the camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's things that when you wake up in the morning, you should always do and include kale and blueberries and, and all that fun stuff. So and we plant a lot of herbs. And interesting herbs. enough, uh, <laughs> herbs, uh, your, your aside, herbs, aside from... <laughs> A specific herb, but <laughs> generally are, are really uh, uh, helpful uh, in, um, in as brain food and uh, carry a lot of vitamins and various uh, 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 beneficial uh, stuff. And we planted a lot of herbs, had the kids from Yonville come out and do that at summer school. Um, but I, I saw something going on and, uh, you know, we, we talked about the brain food and um, I think it, 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 it actually moves to a little different element. The brain food part that I see going on pretty regular out there is that these guys get a great deal of satisfaction in creating something and, and feeling good about themselves. And it's almost, I've almost looked at it when working out there with them and they've even made comments like, this beats the hell out of sitting around watching TV, I feel good about myself. One of the guys from the Pathway graduation one year said, uh, a year and a half ago, they helped build a, a trellis entrance for us. And he said, in the graduation, before all the group, he said, one of the best things that's happened to me in the last six years is that I got to create this for the Brain Food Garden. So when you look at it, it's really a vehicle to, that allows people to get in touch with themselves and feel good about what they're doing and feel like they're making a contribution. So that's a part that I don't think we thought about when we started planting stuff. You know, it's, uh, hey, you know, this is good for you. Eat it. It'll help your brain. Heart, well, it's yeah. a sense of accomplishment that you're Absolutely. doing something. You're Absolutely. not sitting on your butt uh, watching yeah. TV, playing checkers. You're getting yeah. out. You're doing something. And we are what we eat. So if you, you know, if you yeah. can get an education and then be constructive in doing something, yeah. it'll take your mind off of a lot of things sometimes. And sometimes that diversion. Yeah. And, yeah. you know. And, and another question related to that. How is the food used? How is it, you know, what's grown? Where does it go? And how is it used? Therein lies a continuing <laughs> issue. We, we, we would like for it well, to be in the cafeteria tonight. Yeah, it could be solved tonight um, because we do plant it organically and in tubs, and there's a lot of the FDA that has to go on. But what we do, for instance, is the community kids come in, and we think about how we plant is that the Herbe de Provence, which you came up with, um, 
you and Ava, is that the kids get to collect their herbs of Provence and they take it home and they create a recipe with them. We have this uh, where you create a salad. So the kids get to take it. We share it with the pathway. The pathway home does every third Thursday of the, the month. I'm staying on the camera. Um, <laughs> every third Thursday, a barbecue. So um, the family therapist will oftentimes bring the guys down and they'll pick from the garden and they'll host along with usually one of our salads and stuff and create a really fun menu. So we really try to incorporate it into the program. Yeah, and get people to take it home. Yeah. yeah. We'd love Come to the cafeteria at the home to, to no, use it. No, take too much politics. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. Well, have we forgotten anything that we didn't mention about... I, I have something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's an empty wine glass here, and I think I'm going to have some wine. Sure. I'm Susan. If I wasn't going to be on the show, but what, uh, whatever. Yeah, what but I didn't hell? like that the way that was right? looking. So, um, it's too sweet, and I'm so happy to have you here. And we are committed tonight. We, we promise we will bring you Hank in high hill, oh. <laughs> running down the streets of Yonaville. You want to see that. <laughs> So be there. That's right. And um, the other thing is, um, earlier tonight, when you first arrived, I got to see a special thing that you have on your hand. Can, I, can you see this? Yeah. I am going to tweet this picture. Hank, let me wear his ring. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tell us about the yeah. ring. Tell us a little bit about baseball. Um, I got lucky a couple of times, played on some good ball clubs, and um, was fortunate enough to be on a couple of championship teams. We won the pennant up in Seattle. And this was Pacific Coast League. Some of you folks that know baseball mm -hmm. understand the uh, farm system and uh, minor league system and so forth. Uh, I'm a career minor leaguer. Uh, 12 years of triple A ball, double A ball, and a little A ball. And um, lucky enough to win three pennants in that time and uh, made it to big league spring training a couple of times where they said, thank you very much, but no we'll see you later. <laughs> um, I said goodbye to Tug and uh, he carried on and I went down the minor league system, but this was one of the rings of uh, three that I was fortunate enough Wanna to hold get. hold it up, Grace, you can get a little and It was uh, playing for Hawaii in the Pacific Coast League and uh, <laughs> it's quite a good experience. So. Uh, thank Hank you would have probably made it to the big leagues, and they, one reason why he didn't, he wouldn't cut his hair back then. Right. Uh, yeah. Renegade. And it there, was probably, renegade. Exactly. there were things it's going on. as long as yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There were things going on that are still... <laughs> yeah. We've got to keep our jobs. There are still... Yeah. Well, Neil, you've been following baseball for a many long years. Time. What, a are long your, time. what are your highlights of that period? You know, my, my father... <laughs> Well, don't let's not and get into politics. And your memories of the McGraw. Oh, no. I, I'm a SoCal boy, so I'm a Dodger. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Oh. 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 Hey, I did not Sorry. know that. <laughs> no, I, you, know, hey, you are what you, you know. Uh, uh, Breaking news. Yeah. So we used to see them play at, at Chevez Ravine at the old Coliseum with Wally Moon in left field with the, the fence. And I remember when Anaheim used to be a, in the Pacific Coast League. They used, to, they used to play downtown, near downtown L.A. When was I was a little San kid. Diego Padres were in the right. Coast League. A and lot uh, of teams were. The L.A. Angels. Right. And, well, uh, so, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Oakland. and remember when they were that? And then I think one of my highlights is not with uh, a Met, but when I was a kid growing up, uh, my father, my brother, and I saw Sandy Kopex pitch it, the perfect game. Oh, we were there. Wow. But... You know, Tug was the first Met to beat Sandy Koufax, right. and mm -hmm. they tried to yeah. elect him mayor of New York. <laughs> <laughs> now, why do you think I brought that up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm old, but I'm not that old. But, but Napa Valley's produced so many baseball players. There's been from, some great ones yeah, coming out here. Ones, yeah. Bill Buckner to the Buckner Bud brothers, to, yeah, the Brewster, Lawrence, and, the Brewster, and, the Brewster and, and, um, there's a ton of them, and I can't think of a one of them right now. So how about, how about Jeff and Brian? What's that? They don't know me. They wear cups. They, they don't, don't know me. Want to bring you guys in? Just jump in anytime. Can I tell you a quick tug story? Yes. <laughs> I remember when I was much younger, and uh, I was just getting out of high school, 
and I went to see Tug in San Francisco at uh, I believe it was Candlestick uh, Stadium. Park. And uh, Park, Park. I remember walking into the uh, to the stadium and a huge crowd, and it was like a scene from uh, The Rookie with Dennis Quaid where the high school students had gone to see him pitch because he was in the major leagues. And uh, I remember walking in there and thinking, you know, holy crap, this guy that I know at Family Reunions, Tug, is down there playing with these guys. And I went down there, and he was always the entertainer. It, to reiterate what Frank said, he was always very gracious. He treated you like you were the only one there. And it was just a great experience. And after the game, he came out and he was smelling good and all showered and his hair slicked back and everything. And he said, hey, Brian, you want to go back and meet all the uh, the uh, San Francisco Giants? And I was like, what? And he, he <laughs> take one person back, I guess. And he took me back and I got to meet all the famous Giants at the time. And it was really cool. And then coming out, um, as I was coming out, Back in those days, you had those Elton John shoes, so you're kind of tall. And uh, um, I was walking alongside Tug, and I remember there's these people, and they go, they're all crowded out there. Hey, Tug, give me your autograph. Come on, man. Hey, give me your autograph. And uh, my 15 minutes of fame was walking out with Tug, hearing him say that. And some guy goes, hey, that guy, he looks like he's a rookie. That's a rookie. Get his autograph. (laughs) And I go, holy crap. And Tug leans over to me, and he just goes, Hey, go with it. And I, I find the guy's deal. And it was really fun. Every time, all I remember is every time you'd hang out with Tug, even though everybody wanted a piece, he was just really gracious and made you feel like you were really important. And uh, it, he was just a uh, very, very fun, exciting individual to be around. It was, uh, it was a real experience growing up to know Tug. How many, how many autographs did you sign that day? <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think I signed two. I didn't get to where I made a squiggle. I actually wrote it out. Uh. Actually, wasn't that one of his famous sayings that they don't teach you in Little League or something, how to autograph a baseball? Like, oh, be yeah. like mandatory yeah. training? It, it was training. one of the things he used to uh, say at clinics when he did clinics and camps was get yourself an orange or an apple put a piece of paper over it, and practice signing your autograph <laughs> on it for when you get to the big leagues. That's great. That's great. Well, great. we're about to wrap up, but I was I was just hoping that everybody um, could, and you guys included, Jeff and Brian and, and Dad. But I, Neil. <laughs> Neil. 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 Yes. Neil? Hi, Neil. Yeah, there's a... And it, just, to give, with just, the white to, hair. just to give your, your thoughts Perfect. about Tug, and let's end it on, on your, your memories and thoughts of Tug. With, start with Jennifer. Oh, with me. Oh, gosh. Um, <clears throat> my last memory of Tug, we were on the plane coming back from Duke, and we were sitting across from each other on the aircraft, and he had the New York word crossword puzzle with him, and he yelled in, loudly in the plane, Jen, three-letter word, New York soft call. And he stood up from his chair and he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forget that. <laughs> By the way, Tug was just uh, recently named to the New York Mets all-time team. Um, last year was their 50th year in the National League, and the uh, fans voted for an all-time Mets team, and Tug was elected as the uh, left-handed reliever all-time. And uh, I was fortunate enough to go back there and spend some time with uh, his son, Mark, and represent for Tug on the program where they uh, dedicated that team. Quite an honor. Wow. I, uh, uh, I, I've got several memories that, that pop into my mind. They all kind of track the same way. With, but to reinforce what Hank was saying about uh, Tug loved the, 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 the spotlight, we were uh, having dinner down in Southern California. I think you were there, Neil, uh, someplace. And somebody was having a wedding affair over here. So the flashbulbs started going off, and Tug was looking around. 
Must be me. Must be me. <laughs> no, Chuck. Uh, uh, it's a wedding over there. It's, it's not you. Okay. You know, forget it. Probably photo bombed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unique appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But at the same time, I remember one time I was back there and we were at the steps of the library in Philly. You know, the, the Rocky show. The museum. And, right. Yeah. And I think you were there. It was you and me and Tug and we were standing up the top and the, the security guard guy was walking around and he stopped and he looked over and he said, Tug McGraw? And Tug turned around and he, the guy didn't walk over to him. Tug walked over to that guy and Hank and I are hanging around up there. 30 minutes later, we're going, Tug, can we go get a beer or something? <laughs> I mean, it, he was so generous with his time and his person that it was uh, it was really nice awesome the last uh, last time we spent a great amount of time together was a trip across country oh, God. Yeah. Oh. just a few days uh, actually just a week well it's a couple of weeks before he passed away yeah. uh, Tug wanted to make one more trip across country he and I had done that driving years ago and we had a ball and he said Hank, I want to do that one more time. And so we rented an RV, <laughs> and we put Tug and a friend of his who was also dying, uh, and a friend of mine to act as a co-pilot, uh, Mike Mahoney, Dr. Mike Mahoney, uh, who is a Napa fella and uh, a professor at Fresno State now. He was a co-pilot. Anyway, so we had these two dead guys in the uh, RV, <laughs> and we were headed cross country, and Tug was very sick, and um, he kept uh, losing it in his clothes, and we ran out of clothes in a, about two and a half days into the trip, and I said, we're going to get some Depends, because this is ridiculous. <laughs> Tug, Tug says, I'm not wearing Depends. I'm not that old, and I'm not that sick. I said, we got no choice. <laughs> he pulled into a Walmart in Oklahoma somewhere, bought two boxes of pens, came back out to the RV. He was stripped naked, standing in the RV, standing in the RV, spread eagle, with it, holding himself uh, between the cabinets in the RV. And he says, "Well, if I'm wearing them, you're putting them on me." <laughs> oh wow! And so I did. I got these things out of the the wrapper and everything and slipped on. He just stood there like this and finally got him fixed up and everything, put a t-shirt on him and he sat down in the kitchen. We took off and I'm driving. Modoc, uh, Mike Mahoney was co-pilot and we're about 20 minutes down the road and Tug goes, hey! And we all stopped and thought something was wrong. Turned around and looked and Tug went, Oh, these things work good. <laughs> <laughs> and we pulled over and changed them once again. Oh, wow. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, well, we have got to have you guys back on the show and the rest of the family. And I just want to say thank you to Tim McGraw for tweeting us Thanks. and Facebooking us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you and everyone <laughs> to Thanks for having donate to the <laughs> Thanks, Don't, guys. Get, donate thank to you the guys. Tug McGraw Foundation through the Tootsuite website, or there, there's a link directly to the Tug McGraw Foundation. And um, thank you. Just thank you. This thank guy's you. a lot of fun. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.